first thing we have to understand is we have to establish a very common agenda on what we shall be discussing through the online seminar. So that will guys gives you guys a very good idea on what you can expect out of the seminar. All right. So the basic agenda that we shall be talking about today is the first thing what is AWA what is an issue essay and then we'll be going ahead to what is an AWA how to tackle an issue essay how to tackle an argument essay and then tips on scoring high in AWA what is that that you guys need to do and ensure you score high in AWA all right so guys uh, is this with this agenda be happy is there something you want to add to the agenda this is perfect says debug all right uh yeah says ronak so ronak have do you want to add anything to this agenda cut off marks all right we could we could do that uh patel so jayshin says it's enough fantastic so the first thing that we need to talk about is what exactly is an awa all right so before i jump ahead i want to make sure of one thing Everyone in the audience have to be very very interactive just as I said one of my very favorite students have just joined us Parampri just back with us uh, So but every one of you have to be very very interactive I want to promise to ask your questions then and there so that we can have a very interactive session So will you guys promise me that? Yes, so Hush is also with us Yes, with a lot of yes says Parampreet, Sujana, Raja Sabhanath. Yes, hell yeah says Mughal Fabulous job. So the first thing is what is AWA? Can you guys do you guys know what is an AWA? So analytical writing says Parampit. Analytical writing says Kaninde. Analytical writing ability. All right. So most of you guys know what exactly analytical writing is. But we know what exactly AWA symbolizes, but we don't know what exactly it means. Can anyone explain to me what is AWA? All right, so let me just do it. Uh, the first thing is when, when you talk about AWA, nothing but analytical writing uh, ability that has two essays in the form of issue and argument. This is just to analyze how well a student is able to articulate his ideas from his mind in form of language. All right, it also judges your critical thinking like Arpit Pandey just said, yes, but the primary objective is to see how well your mind can think and how well you're able to articulate that particular fact. That is a primary test behind it. And the AWA is comprising of e essay questions put out of six marks. All right. You write an issue, you write an argument, both are out of six marks, and it increases the increment in form of 0 0.5 marks, which means you can either score a 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so on. Ideally, a minimum requirement for any top 100 universities would be four at least the top 50 universities would be four so guys it is really recommended that you guys have that awa score all right so by the end of the seminar i hope i'll be able to help each one of you to get that magical number four at least what happens is a lot of students they do not they do not give the the importance that this particular uh, section deserves and even though they have a very high gr score of 325 they end up not getting admits from certain universities who are very, very skeptical about AWA. For example, let's say from the audience, we have Shweta, we have uh, Mukul, we have uh, Parampri, we have Arpit Pandey. Now, you four guys might have the same GRE score of 325 to 330, right? And you guys might have a almost ideal profile, but you're applying for the same particular seat in a university, say New York University. The final differentiating factor would be your AWA score, guys, because AWA is somewhere people are very casual about and they might tend to lose marks. So you have to be very, very careful about that. All right. So I would be better recommend you guys to give a lot of importance to AWA, not as much as you give for verbal. But at the end of the day, if you have your GR in the next four weeks, start practicing with AWA in a very intense manner. Give at least one hour every day. So what does exactly AWA measure is a question that every audience, every student want to know. So critical thinking and analytical writing skills, just as I explained before, an ability to understand and support complex ideas, providing a strong reason how well you're able to defend your own claim is what a matter. And it does not assess a specific content knowledge. A lot of people are very afraid the moment they say something like, um, uh, very technical subject on your AWA, they get to, they tend to get very feared. One of my friends also went through the same issue. The moment you see that particular any 
technical essay you don't have to worry guys because it does not check the content knowledge it only checks your ability to write and reason so the next thing is now you have to realize how important is aw right so although these six marks do not constitute any portion of 340 marks in gre they are equally important when it comes to your, admin, your admission process how many of you guys already have that uh, target university in your mind So me says Tinku Kumar, Paranpreet says me, I have Sajarpit Pandey. So guys, name the university. Which university are you guys looking for? Manisha says me, Raja Sabnath may say Texas, fantastic, says Patel, MIT or Harvard, says Arpit Pandey. Illinois says Paranpreet, California says Gayatri. So uh, Jayashir has already decided, all right Jayashir, and I hope I'll be able to help you with that. Stanford says uh, Raja Sabnath, wow, University of California, UCB, Colorado, Texas, Purdue, very good, wow. So we have a very, very, very ambitious in, uh, set of audience in the uh, crowd today. So so given that fact, what GRE score are you guys targeting? Uh, I just I want to understand you guys better. Can you tell me which, uh, what kind of admission uh, GRE score are you guys targeting? So 325 says Rudra, 320 plus says Fanindra, 330 plus. All right, 330 plus says Parampreet, wow. I haven't seen a single score below 330. That is very, very, very good, guys. Now the most important part. Now you guys tell me what AWS score will you aim for? Six, says Arsh. Five, four, six, four. All right. Very good. So that is, you have to target that also, guys. You cannot compromise on that because it is very important. Given the fact that most of you are targeting the top 20 to top 50 universities, your AWS score plays a very important role. So now let us jump ahead to the topic of what are the types of AWA. All right. So how many of you guys know what are the types of AWA? So Sujana says she knows it. Two says Shweta. Two types. So Sarpit Pandey. Ronak says he does not know. So Parampreet says issue an argument. Jaishiran says issue an argument. So you guys know what a rough idea for the people who do not have any rough idea. There are two types of AWA guys. One is called the issue. Another one is called the argument. So for issue, you're given 30 minutes in the GRE. For argument, you're given 30 minutes in the GRE. All right. So you'll be asked to write an essay on both. Let us look at first, what is an issue? So what is an issue topic? The first thing is you're provided with the opinion of an issue. All right. So you have to react according to the instructions mentioned. You need to understand the issue and support your stand with examples and reasons. This is what an exact issue is. You're given an opinion of an issue. You have to explain how that opinion makes sense, how it does not make sense. You don't, you, don't, you may not necessarily take a stand like, yes, the opinion is completely true. The opinion is completely false. All right. You just have to put in some logic and explain why the opinion could be right, why the opinion could be wrong. You have to mention this completely in an issue. All right. That's what issue essay is about basically. If you look at an example, you might get a much better picture. All right. So let us just look at an example. Shall we? Shall we guys? Harsh says yes. Amit, Prakula, Parampreet, Swapnil, Rudra. Very good. So the examples are on your screen. There are two examples there. The first example is educational institutions have a responsibility to dissuade students from pursuing fields of study in which they are like, unlikely to succeed. Now, this is the opinion of a particular student, of a particular person, right, of a particular author. Now, you have to take your own opinion on this and give log logical arguments why this opinion could be right, why this opinion could be wrong. The only differentiating factor is you cannot completely accept to the opinion. You have to give both the sides of the argument. All right? Are we clear, guys? Akash says yes. Sure, says Mukul. Yes, says Shujana. All right. A nation should require all of its students to study the same national curriculum until, until they enter college. Now, you have to use your imagination to put up logical arguments on why this could be wrong or this could be right. These are the basic, basic examples. Now, if I look at the argument topic, you might just understand it better. So now, if you look at what is an argument topic, you can take now notes, guys. You need to evaluate the given argument and test the logic of an argument. As in, if an argument topic is given to you, you either take completely for or completely against and give a supporting statements on your own stand. 
So you have to be very focused on one side of the aisle. In an issue, you can both support and say no, giving proper examples. In an argument, you should completely be biased towards one side. You should always test the logic of an argument and see if it's working out or not. So do you guys understand the difference between an issue and an argument? So Manisha says yes. What about the remaining guys? Harsh says yes, yes. So oh, we have a fantastic question that I was expecting from someone. Shweta says, do we have to use the technical word we have read it from 3500 words? Shweta, we have a lot of students who have scored above, above 4.5 in our GREH Academy. If you talk to each one of them, one thing that we observed is that none of them try to use fancy words in their argument because AWA is not a check of your vocabulary. It is more check of your critical thinking and how you well you're able to articulate your ideas. All right. These two are the factors. So I would really, really recommend you guys not to use very strong vocabulary. You don't have to show off your vocabulary. You can show off your vocabulary to your friends, but not in the exam because that's not what the AWA evaluator is looking for. All right. Are we clear that? Are we clear that, guys? Shweta, I hope that answers your question. All right. So let us look at a look at example of what is an argument topic. If you look at an argument topic, the example is on your screen right now. The following memorandum is from the business manager of Happy Pancake House Restaurant. Now, recently, butter has been replaced by margarine in Happy Pancake House restaurants throughout the southwestern United States. This change, however, has had a little impact on our customers. In fact, only about 2% of the customers have complained, indicated that an average of 98 people out of 100 are happy with the change. Furthermore, many servers have reported that a number of customers who ask for butter do not complain when they are given margarine instead. Clearly, either these customers do not distinguish butter from margarine or they use the term butter to refer both. Now, you have to take this. This is an argument given, right? Now you could they have, the conclusion that they make is that people do not make a difference between a butter or a margarine, right? Your job is to conclude is to put a conclusion. Is that right or is it wrong? So Ronak already fantastic Ronak. Ronak says this is wrong. That's my stand. So how many of you are for and how many of you are against this? Wrong says Patel. Wow, everyone is against it. <laughs> no one is for it. All right. So everyone is against it, right? The first step that you've gone is fantastic job. Because you know you're against it. You're very clear of that. The next thing that you guys need to do is what are the assumptions given by the author? You have to break those assumptions in the one of the passage. The next passage, you have to give your own logical arguments supporting your again statement. So Pratik says, does it matter whether you go for it or against it? How many of you guys in the audience think it matters whether you go for or against it? It doesn't says Niyati. No matter says Shweta. It might says Ronak. It doesn't matter. So guys, let me come to conclusion. It does not matter which stand you take as long as your logical argument is very, very, very sound. You have to have very sound logistics. You have to have very sound numbers. You have to be that clear. If you're clear, it does not matter which side you take. All right. But just because it is easier to agree, you cannot take it. For example, one of uh, probably uh, let us take a student X might just say uh, it is easier for me to say for in this statement. Let us just say yes, customers do not make a difference between butter and margarine. So the author is right. If you say that, what AWS code will you get? Two says Arpit Pandey. That is quite high, Arpit. To be honest, you might even get a minus one, like Swapnil Patel just said. So, so that is that is what I'm talking about. It does not matter what side you should be taking. You should be very clear on what side you're taking. All right. So now, can you guys tell me? This is a small test I want to give you guys. What is the primary difference between an issue and an argument? You guys can type out your answer. Let me see how many of you guys have got it right. In the meantime, let me take up a question. So I have a question from one of our audience. Uh, some say grammar is important in AWA, but some say that critical thinking is important. Can you please justify? Uh, I would ask this question, guys. Grammar is very, very equally important to critical thinking because, as I said, the two things are being checked in your AWA. One is the critical thinking. The second is your ability to articulate your thoughts. When you articulate your thoughts, you use a language called English, which follows a certain rules called grammar, right? 
So you cannot say which one is important. Both critical thinking and grammar is equally important. Yes, just for that said, I think both are important. Now, uh, I have a lot of answers for that. So Shweta says argument is like a debate. All right, for perfect Shweta. So Jayashilan says issue is about understanding flaws. Very good, Jayashilan. Very good, very good. So Ronak has uh, put it in a nutshell. Issue has both stands while argument has only one side. Exactly, guys. Uh, Harsh says argument means checks your decision making ability. Exactly, exactly, Harsh. If you are very clear with the decision, that means your shows off as a confident person. That is one more thing that is checked in the behind screen, so but that is, not, that is not something you have to be very worried about. So these are the very fundamental things. So are we clear so far? Have we established the difference between issue and argument? Yes, I see a lot of yes coming up. All right, so I believe you guys are excited. We'll also look at some examples in the upcoming screen. So now the question becomes, now that I know what issue and argument is, how do I tackle a issue essay? What else should I do about the issue essay? So that is the next question that most of you guys ask, right? All right, so I see yes again in my screen. So guys, you can note this down. The very first thing, there are three steps for your tackling an issue essay. First thing is you understand. You understand the statement like Ronak just said. The moment I put up the issue, the moment I put up the argument, he said, I take, I'm taking against stand, right? But to understand the essay and think. And third thing is organize. So Tejas Shay Jain from our audience also has certain tips for us. He said we should understand the limitation and examples will help us more. Exactly, Tejas, you're right. We will be talking about the examples in the upcoming uh, slides. All right. So these are the three steps. Let us look at each step and understand how it will help us. The understanding the essay is you have to very clear and understand the topic, focus on the instruction and decide how do you want to address this central issue. The very first thing you have to understand what the issue is about and only then you have to go about it. Don't worry, we look at the example at the end of the session. Do not worry. The next step is getting to think. What is that that you think, right? So the next step is to think. Consider several points of view critically. You have to have certain perspectives. You can always have a bigger picture. You cannot be giving very, very, you cannot be very personal. You have to think from a bigger picture, take a position, and develop reasons and examples. For example, for the AW I just gave, do you guys remember what issue topic I gave? Can you tell me what the central issue is about? So in this question, let us take up the first example. What is the central issue about? So Ronak says education, Mukul Suri says education. What about remaining guys? What do you guys think? Education, responsibility, all right. So now that you know the education, several points of view. Is it good to dissuade students? Is it bad to dissuade students? What happens if you dissuade students? What will not happen if you dissuade students? These are several points of view and you have to take a position in any particular view. All right. So now let us example that uh, our guest, our uh, student today, Lavanya, she takes a stand saying it is wrong to dissuade students. And if you dissuade, this is what will happen. She takes these two stands and then she'll develop reason and examples for that particular S points and then she'll articulate her thoughts. It is as simple as that guys. It is as simple as that. Organize your ideas, express your ideas very clearly with fluent using appropriate vocabulary. It is never, never needed to you to show off your vocabulary because that is not what AWA is about. All right. So guys, are you clear so far what AWA issue is? Yes, says Harsh. Yes, says Manisha. Does anyone have a question so far? All right. No, I get an all of no's. So the next thing is the four. There are very four important instructions that you guys need to remember in your AWA. Now I got a fantastic question from Jay Shiran. Is it safe to use a local example to support her opinion? Very good question, Jay Shiran. I was expecting. I was hoping someone will take bring that up. In a issue, a typical issue, you have to give at least two to three examples. All right. One example can be something of personal or local example, but definitely one of the examples should be a global example where a person from any corner of the world will be able to understand. For example, if you relate to something political right now in India with Modi or Rahul Gandhi, that people might know. If you talk about last night's show with Oliver, that again, a lot of people know. If you talk about Batman versus Superman, 
that again people know if you talk about Dhoni and Asia Cup win yesterday by the way yes cheers that again people know so you have to give examples that people know about and not just your own places all right so if you give that kind of examples definitely your AWA mark will just boost up because the evaluator will understand what you exactly try to say all right so I hope that answers your question uh, Jay Shiren. And this is a, again tip two of the day. I want everyone to be very clear. Give example at least one. This is a very global example. Uh, Tejas Jain has a question. What about hypothetical examples? Hypothetical might not really play well. Uh, Tejas, you can give one hypothetical example, but one global example is a must. Yes, Pradeep, you can use examples. That are a very sensitive topic because the opinion is what matters. All right, so guys, are we clear? Can we jump ahead? We will talk about the word limit of the essay at the end of the seminar, Arpit. Don't worry, I'll give you that. Yes, so number of paragraphs, how many uh, lines, I'll talk all about at the end. Don't worry. Now, the four important instructions that you talk about is the statement that you're using. Whenever you write an issue, whatever statement you give and whatever reasoning you give, you have to give strong examples and why you say that. The claims you make on reason which the claim is based, you have to agree or disagree to that whatever recommendation that you provide for example in the in the topic we just saw the topic we just saw it is very clear that a lot of people are against it a person can should disobey it. so can you tell me that we looked at the example right so if what's the recommendation that you guys will provide should I show the example again all right see a lot a lot of yes is on my screen right now so this is the example the first question so what would be your recommendation for this particular uh, question let us see who was very quick in their response let's see Harsh Parampri I'm expecting a lot from you guys Niyati you could talk about anything So in the in the meantime, I want to make one thing very clear. So guys, am I audible? I see a few people from the audience saying I'm not audible. Am I audible? Hello, am I audible guys? Hello? Guys, am I audible? Hello? Hello? Uh, hi guys, am I audible? Hello? Am I audible guys? Check. Hello? Hello? Am I audible? All right. So sorry for the technical glitch, guys. It happens to be a very small technical glitch where I, uh, we're not able to say anything. Anyways, so coming back to what we were talking about, a recommendation that I needed from you guys is what we were talking about. So I recommend, Ronak has a fantastic example. He says, I recommend to choose students which universities find not appropriate by taking a pre-entry exam. Very good, very good, Ronak. That is a fantastic example. You can definitely provide this in your uh, AWM if you asked. You can also give a very supporting statement for that. Similarly, you can also bring in policies. If you have any policies in the mind, you could put those policies and tell why we can have that policy. Now, Tejas says, I don't agree with the statement because if you have skills to succeed, no field is wrong. Opportunities are what we create. So guys, am I audible? All right, so I am audible again. So now that we have in talked enough about issue, can we jump back to the argument? All right, so everyone says yes. So now guys, tell me, what do you think 
uh, how do you think you should frame an argument? So if you look at the examples I gave you, there's a very clear understanding of what argument is. An argument is a paragraph given from where you have to find the logical flaws. All right, a conclusion will be drawn. No matter what it is, a conclusion should be drawn and it is, it is supposed to be your conclusion. The moment you read a topic like Ronak just did, he immediately jumped to a conclusion and he was able to get it. So that much amount of confidence you should be, you should be able to make. All right. So can we look at certain examples to understand how you can do that? So Tejas has a question. Wait, should we go for a partial agreement? The side we take matter for ETS. Tejas, you should be, you cannot be a partial agreement. You have to completely agree with whatever you say because that shows how confident you are with your stand. All right. So I personally recommend any of you guys, if you're writing an argument, to be very, very firm and very sure of it. I hope that answers your question, Tejas Jain. Do anyone else have any question so far? You could post your questions right now. I'll be very happy to answer. So Ronak says, I lost connection. Did I miss? No, Ronak, we are just talking about how to talk, uh, how to write an argument. Yes, Fanindra, we can. In issue, we can talk about partial understanding. But in argument, we have to be very, very clear. All right, you have to be very clear to understand what it means. So guys, uh, is there any other questions you have? I'll be jumping ahead to certain examples if you let me. So can you repeat once, Ronak? Ronak, when you go for an argument, one thing that is very sure is that you have to be very clear which side you take. All right. You cannot partially accept to something. So I, I'm getting more of questions like how many paragraphs I have to write, how many words I have to write. I will be talking about all that in the end of the session, guys. Do not worry. Do not panic. I will be giving that. So Niyati, can you please uh, give me, I don't understand your question. Can you please give me a, a rephrase your question? All right, so Patel says, let's go ahead. All right, if you say so, Patel, we can definitely go ahead. Product, we haven't missed any uh, repeat uh, issue slides. Don't worry, we just jump ahead to the straightaway argument. So do not worry, I'll be giving you a video recording at the end also. So now Anshur has a very good question. He says, why don't we consider the fact that strengthens the argument, the conclusion drawn by the author? Uh, Anshul, the moment if you agree with the author, what happens is it shows up a little weak and you won't have much points. So one thing that we most of the students do is that they immediately go against the argument because if you're able to fight against the argument, you will be very strong. You will be considered to be someone who can be very persuading. So that is one que that is one reason why it is always better to go against the argument. So guys, uh, can we jump ahead? Uh, I think we're taking too much time on this. Can we jump ahead? So let us look at an example. You guys might understand better, right? And I see a lot of very in less interactive people. So guys, are you excited? Can we look at the example? All right, fantastic. So if you look at an example, a very simple argument is on your screen right now. A 15 year old boy met with an accident. He has his board exam in a week, so he must undergo a surgery immediately. So can you guys give me what was the conclusion in that slide? What is the conclusion? He should wait, says Ranag, okay. Immediate surgery, says Pratik. He must undergo surgery, says Anshul Bhatt. Fantastic. The conclusion of the immediate conclusion of your mind should be he must undergo a surgery. And the premises, as in the supporting details, is he met with an accident. He has his exam in a week. 
these are the premises one thing that happens is a lot of people do not understand what a conclusion is what a premise is can i give you an example to understand that better so fanindra has a very humorous example being alive is more important than exams trust me guys it's very very important all right being alive is a top priority health comes before anything just simran preet said so let us look at what a visual explanation of what a conclusion and premise is there is a picture on your screen right now conclusion is your destination like showed where you have to go that is your conclusion and your premise is is the pillars that support this particular bridge so if you take a argument that has certain conclusion you have to provide these premises to get that argument completed now are you clear what a argument what a conclusion and premise is everyone i want everyone to say yes if you're clear ronak think oh hush amit all right fantastic so i see so many yes popping up so that is the difference between a conclusion and an essay now to put it in words conclusion is nothing but the author's opinion for recommend and recommendation for a action now you could go against a conclusion or for a conclusion premise is the fact the author uses to back up his or her opinion the author has a particular conclusion and he supports these two premises you are, if you are going against the argument you have to break these premises using logical statements all right and assumptions are unstated condition there are certain conditions that might not been mentioned by the author right you have to take these assumptions into picture and break them as well so are we clear so far so arpit pandey has a fantastic question can we use quotes in a essay arpit pandey trust me the moment you use a quote your 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 credibility of a essay would hugely matter but there's one small flaw to it you have to be very very clear who the author of the quote was if you do not mention the who the quote of the author was you would lose credibility because that means you're not read through the complete thing you just have remember and you made it up so you have to mention the author very clearly and in case if you mention the place where you came across from it adds a lot more credibility so guys would you all promise to use quotes in your uh, awa yes says arpit no says samranjit or right, surely says niyati all right so be very clear if you are going to use a quote you have to you have to be very clear if you know who the author is all right so now how to tackle a argument essay that is just good points by point the first thing you should do is to understand what the word is so manisha says can we repeat the words of a author uh, manisha yes you can repeat but don't make it redundant if you're repeating the words of a author you have to explain why you mentioned it very clearly i hope that answers your question manisha so now if you look at the argument the first thing you have to do is understand critically analyze if he's right or wrong these two steps we are very fast the moment we saw our example we said we are going against it the third thing is evaluate so now you said against you have to evaluate your argument the first thing is check check for assumption there is a checklist that you have to have guys you can write this down you can take a screenshot every time you do a awa you tick these side by side all right so i hope that will be helpful for you guys uh, i just want to have a small we have more and more coming up is the session helpful guys is it informative All right, fantastic. So I see a lot of yes coming up. I want to give you more help. So what I'll do is I'll give you a link where you can download a free checklist that has all the AWA examples, all the checklists that you need for a successful AWA. How many of you guys are interested in having this guide? Me with the capital. Wow, wow. I see so many emails coming up on my screen so let us just give me the link it is on your chat boxes right now bit.ly/1ll/wpj just click on the link you'll be taken to a your browser which might be internet explorer or google chrome or mozilla firefox you can download the checklist by logging in there i have given you the link as well patel so guys once you download look at the link and tell me how important it how do you like it then we'll say type yes in chat box so that we could jump ahead to the next upcoming slides
Yes, so Gayatri has downloaded it. So Gayatri, you can go through your checklist and see how helpful it is. Is it helpful? Do you want us to add anything more to it? So Fainza says it's really very helpful. Akriti says it's perfect. Uh, thank you, Akriti. I hope you are glad to help you out. So guys, can we jump ahead to the next upcoming slides? So Madhuri Bindi says, yes, perfect. Says Tejas, yes, says Harsh. Fantastic. So the next thing is how to go about the argument essay, how to write it is the next topic that we need to discuss, right? So let us just look at one example there. First thing is more and more research. These are the steps that you guys need to do. A lot of people ask me, what should I write for introduction, right? How many of you had that question? How to write an introduction? Wow, I see so many me in my screen. So here is the cheat sheet that you can use. This is what we call as cheat sheet. Uh, it's not exactly cheating, but you know, it's just a nickname. A cheat sheet that you can have. Do take a screenshot if you're interested. I'll also try to send the video across to you guys. The introduction is paraphrase the conclusion. Very, very clear. You have to paraphrase the conclusion. The conclusion that you make, you have to paraphrase it. Mention the premise for that conclusion. We talked about what premise is. Present your position in a logical soundness of conclusion. Do not completely finish the essay in the first paragraph. Just say, this is what I want to say. And then you have to start your argument. All right. So take your stand in the first essay and give a very small premise for it. And the next passage should have an argument. So if I were able to explain using a pen, what I would say is first one is your introduction. This part, this one, the second essay should be your example one. Please don't mind my handwriting because I'm using a mouse here. The second one should be example with the premise understanding. The third thing is also should be example two while name is as E2. The third paragraph should be E3 on why you want to support your argument. The last thing should be a conclusion backward. So let us see what the conclusion is. All right. So the conclusion that I want to say is here on your screen. State once again that the argument is not well reasoned. Tell them, tell the readers that the argument you have given is completely wrong and why and summarize in a very brief way. These are the very, very fundamental tricks for your argument, guys. If you follow this, trust me, you will be able to mention, you will be able to take that four out of six. Now the most important topic comes, how many words should I write? How many paragraphs should I write? Right? So how many of you have, guys have that question? Again, a lot of me, a lot of people have that question. So this is what we recommend you guys. For an issue, you have to write at least 450 to 600 words with four paragraphs, one in one pa one introduction, one conclusion, and two, what is it called? Two explaining statements. The argument should have 550 to 750 words with at least five paragraphs. Yes, Manisha, you can give a definite conclusion that I agree with, disagree. So guys, have you got this down? Word limits, is there anyone who has a question for that? Now let us look at the do's and don'ts for an AWA. So I see, I got a request. So Sanjana says, please lot, lot one more session for AWA soon. Sanjana will be very happy to do that. So now, the next thing is use universal example. The do's and don'ts of AWA said, use more and more universal example. Quotes of famous people and relevant explanations. Have a default template. A lot of my students, what they do is, even before they go for a GRE, they have a default template written. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I just put the information there. So those templates you, you get to, you can get by, you know, subscribing to GRE H program, something like that. So you'll be getting template will be very easy. And use statistical data, guys. If you say 5% of this audience did this, trust me, they have so much credibility. If you are very good in numbers, so how many of you guys are good in statistical data here? So Deepak says me, not me says Ronak, me says Rudra Banerjee. So I assumed you would be good Rudra Banerjee. So if you guys, what if it is fake? One stage is guys, please do not put fake data there. That will completely ruin your AWA. If you're very sure of your statistical data, you can put that there. 
All right. There are a lot of predefined AWA templates out there. You just have to go do a good research and try to understand which statistical data might help you. Or you could talk to one of our GRH experts in the GRH program. They would give you all these details that you're looking for. Now, what are the now we have a do's on the screen. How many of you want to know what are the don'ts that are in the AWA section? The most important flaws. All right. Again, I see a lot of me coming up. So. One thing is very very clear if you do not know who said the quote do not mention the quote. All right Very clear guys be very clear about that The next thing is if you're unsure of what exact statistics do not use it Never repeat a same line if you repeat a same line you have thereby boom you lose a mark And the next is no grammatical errors whatsoever No matter what you cannot have a grammatical error because at the moment you have a grammatical error that means you're not good in the language, which means that whoever the right the evaluator will believe that he might not suit the education system abroad. So be very clear of that. It is so now, guys. What is that that you can do to ensure that you none of these happen on your AWA? What is that you think we can help you or you need help? Practice says Ron, definitely practice. Hush says practice. Training says Deepak. Feedback says Akriti. Simon Pete says practice. Vocabulary says Simon Pete. So guys, if there was a personal trainer to look at each AWA and give you feedback on what all you need to improve, on what you shouldn't, would that be helpful? Niyati says best ever. Rudra says yes. Ronak says yes. All right. So a personal trainer to give you a feedback is something that you want for your AWA. All right, so we'll keep a pin on that. So now let us look at the tips on how to score high in your AWA. First thing is take a stance in the very first paragraph. The very first paragraph, you take a stance. The second is provide justifications for any agreement or disagreement with the issue in the subsequent paragraphs. Do not state explicitly whether you agree or disagree with the topic. In a in an issue, you cannot dis, you cannot just say I agree or disagree. You have to mix it up. Keep it in the meadow side. The next thing is don't get carried away when you analyze the issue. Don't get in the deepest of deepest arguments like God particle. Don't don't talk about very deep technical stuff because the ETS evaluator is not talking about how well you're in the content knowledge. They talk about how critically you think, how good is your language. That's all they talk about. All right. The next thing is the ideal number of lines per para is five to six line, guys. You cannot go more than that. In fact, four to five is much better. And if you can use state words like contrasting slow and fast, blatant and surreptitious, hearsays and eyewitnesses, these kind of things adds, you know, kind of a slang to your particular language, which is attractive. But do not go right, mention your colloquial language there, like Tanglish and all. Don't do that. But I'm just saying, all right. So that is something that you guys can do. So guys, did you like the session so far? Thank you so much for joining us. This is Vishnu signing off. A very good evening and take care guys.